watching a master at work. Okay guys, today I'm going to talk about the Garrett GTX 3076R. And I've been doing a lot of searching on information on if I should use this on my stock 1JZ VVTi uh, engine. Because I just feel like the CT15B, the stock turbo, is just kind of just not enough, I guess. It just, to me, it chokes out up top. That's just my personal opinion. Some people say they're fine if you run 18 pounds on the stock turbo, but... Me personally, I kind of play everything safe, and the factory CT15B exhaust wheel is made out of ceramic, so that does not like a lot of vibration and, and harshness per se, it just explodes. And potentially that could take out your engine if you push it too far, the efficiency range from Toyota is 12 to 14, no more than 15. That's what I saw on some of the forums, it's take it with a grain of salt. It, but uh, I kind of have like a little spreadsheet set out here on the GTX 3076. So this is going to be the ultimate GTX 3076 overview of st statistical analysis, basically. Let's look at the numbers. So uh, if you don't know how to calculate, or I'm not calculate, but read pressure ratios and compressor maps, I can kind of show you a little bit. It's pretty easy. Uh, you just need to know the values that you need. Um, there's an app called Garrett Boost Advisor, which I have on my phone just kind of for fun to see what the what it calculates for a generic, you know, parameters of the pressure ratio or pounds a minute of airflow. So basically, from the information I've dug up, I have the GTX, the compressor inducer and exducer information, 58 versus 76, a 58 trim, 60 AR, um... The turbine is 60, 55, uh, 84 trim, non-divided. With the, I have the 63AR exhaust housing non-divided. It's a T3. The factory turbo is a CT15B. The inducer is 46 to 65, a 50 trim. I can't find any ARs on this. I know it's a T2 flange, but it's like a circular Toyota-specific flange. A lot of people cut them off and weld T3 flanges on there. Um... The turbine is 6048, which is a 64 trim. So if you look, 60, or sorry, 58 trim versus 50 trim, 84 trim versus 64 trim. So I kind of calculated all of that stuff and did a comparison of percentage larger for the GTX versus the CT15B. So compressor inducer is 26% larger. The exducer is 16% larger. The inducer is the exact same size, and the exducer for the turbine is 14% larger. And here's a, a, a picture of what that means, inducer, exducer, turbine, and compressor. Basically, just kind of the size of the wheel. So here I have the compressor map for the GTX 3076R. Um, basically, you have... On your x-axis is corrected airflow in pounds a minute. You need to figure out what your engine needs to produce what airflow at a certain amount of horsepower relative to the pressure ratio. So there's a formula that basically, a rule of thumb formula that I've calculated here. So here, you want your boost pressure that you want to shoot for. So normally, like, I'm using stock ECU and injectors. So 370cc, stock ECU, and stuff like that. So I'm not going to try and go over 10 pounds just due to the nature of the turbo and the potential of power that it can push out. So I calculate this. You add the boost pressure to 14.7, which is basically just the neutral number for uh, a pounds per air, basically. And then you divide that by 14.7 to get the pressure ratio. That's a good rule of thumb. Um, basically, one... Uh, what would you call a pound a minute is equal to 10 horsepower. So here, I'm shooting for 300, well, 30 times, you know, 10 pounds per minute or whatever. The calculation is 300 horsepower, essentially. 350, 35, so, you know. Uh, the Boost Advisor app has its range. 
that it, it recommends basically from the information you put in, what power you want, what intercooler you're using, what fuel, your altitude, stuff like that. It came up with 16 to 29 pounds a minute for my specific application, a 2.5 liter single turbo, you know, 350 brake horsepower, let's say, or three, 400, somewhere in that range. And it only gives you one pressure ratio, so 1.51. The calculated one from my math um, is 1.54 minimum for 300, 1.68 for 350. This is also brake horsepower, so it's most likely gonna be closer to 400 to make this in wheel horsepower. So there's that. So basically, if we take those parameters, we can put them on this graph. So you have the pressure ratio. Let's just do minimum range. So we got 1.54 here. One, let's just say 1.5. And then the 1.68. So here is 1.75. Let's just say like right here, I guess. 1.68 so let me just draw this here just draw a line for funsies and uh, basically you take the pounds per minute here and let's just draw a little range 30 or 35 so that makes it simple go up through the compressor range. Let me do this with a highlighter actually, make it a lot easier. So you can see what I'm doing here. 1.68, 1.5, 30 and 35. So up, 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 and up. So there we have the pressure ratio and the corrected airflow. So basically on this compressor map, any th this is these are the uh, compressor map islands, they're rated in efficiency. 77, or sorry, 72 is what they've rated this max efficiency on Garrett's website. But on these islands, obviously there's hypothetical calculation, 78 is what you could t essentially get. And then the higher the boost pressure, which more pressure ratio versus more airflow, the efficiency just decreases slowly and falls off eventually. So technically this area right here is the choke point. Choke. If you don't have enough airflow and pressure ratio, you will choke. This turbo will be too big. It won't have enough air to move it to its minimum compression efficiency range, which is not good. Basically, you're not making the boost. It's very laggy, um, it's, et cetera, stuff like that. So that's, that's not good. So that's what I was worried about when I put my turbo together, my, like, my setup, my manifold, waste get all that stuff. I want more power and I want a, top, a better top end, which is why I went with the GTX 3076. And um, so I was worried about this, so I've been doing a lot of research on if it's going to be enough for the stock ECU and the stock injectors, or if it will be too big and, and not being able to be utilized enough. Because essentially the CT15B is bigger than a T25, but not as big as a T28. And I don't want to buy a T28, like that's just really small, and there's not really a margin to make more power, especially on a six cylinder, like maybe 450, if you're lucky, that's like choking that thing out. So I wanted to kind of have a turbo I can use on stock and if I switch to injectors and standalone, I can still keep the same turbo and make more power and not have any lag or anything like that. So luckily the turbo I have came with the 63 AR. Um, it's the smallest housing that they offer. If you look here on the pressure ratio map, there you got the uh, 61, 63, 83, 82, 101, 106. And they're all in T3 flanges or V-band. So basically, let's say the 63 here, the minimum pressure ratio you have to make is 1.25. And basically, the highest that it will flow is right about 20. Just like a little bit like 21, let's say 21 pounds a minute. So, based on my math, 
it's a little bit above the minimum, which is good because that will keep me out of the choke range. It's 21 is minimum and two and a half, which I don't need that much. I'm down here. So that right there is like, it's not too bad. It's within the range. It's okay. I mean, it's not ideal to the maximum efficiency, but it will do. It won't be a problem. Um, basically with the low boost, you have to run a larger wastegate. So I just chose with the tile 44 millimeter. Um, they do sell 38s. I wouldn't recommend getting a 38 if you're going to run eight to 10 pounds like I am. Um, I have some friends running 50 millimeter wastegate, the Turbo Smart, just to combat boost uh, spike and keep the turbo equal and where they need for their power and no um, inefficiencies, things like that. So, I mean, just look at the math right there, 16 to 29, 1.51. If I was to go off a of boost advisor's like hypothetical assessment, like, oh, just generic values, Let's see 1.51 right here and it says 16 to 29 pounds a minute to make the power I need to make it's like 16 man that's like right in that chunk where it's gonna fall off and not even be worth it 16 to 29 is like in here that's like peak horse peak torque peak horsepower it's like right in there based on their assessment but I think I'll be okay um, the 1.68 is for 350 so I think that would be perfect and that's uh, I'm sure that will be 8 to 10 pounds it'd be no problem for that thing to do that uh, down here is a little in eh. but back to the graph here is the inefficiency range it's too too much boost pressure and uh, just too much airflow for what the turbo is rated for so that will be the surge line surge line say you need some of the higher horsepower like the 1.0 ar like turbos that make you know six seven hundred minimum they're in the 50 to 60 range minimum so like you're okay like when you're starting to barely spool and then you get into that 60 and you need like s crazy amounts of you know pressure and whatnot you're running 30 psi it's up in this range and that's the the uh surge line and your turbo will not be able to make enough airflow to keep up with the engine demands and it will just surge and the turbo will just have a lot of issues and just potentially fail so you want to shoot for that maximum efficiency range you want to check what turbo you want to go with you know what your power goals are high range mid range low range look into doing research on trims and AR ratios. AR is just the area divided by the radius of the turbocharger housing and the compressor wheel to get the rating. Higher is more, obviously, more flow, um, as you can see in this graph here. But, uh, so, yeah, see the 61's like barely above 17 max pressure ratio, and this 1.06 is like above 25 so like 27 so obviously you see that right there and that's the gtx 3076 there's all of the information they have reverse rotation and the gen 2s are out currently i have the first generation um but right there that's max efficiency that you want to get that's like right above two pressure ratio and 40 pounds a minute it's like the sweet spot they were I was doing research is around 18 PSI. It's like right around 500 brake horsepower. Um, Garrett obviously recommends that you use a 1.8 liter to a three liter and 400 to 750 horse. They have a lot, a lot of range and like that 400 horsepower, I don't know if that's brake or wheel, but like that's the bare minimum that they recommend using this turbo for. So that's why I was kind of worried, but it was just too good of a deal to pass up. And just, I want my car to just sound nasty with the external wastegate and the stock turbo. You can't really do that too well. It's kind of muffled and things like that. Just a bunch of different reasons. Uh, this is going to be a kind of a long video. Um, I know you guys don't really particularly like talking. Maybe, uh, if you do cool, I'm, I'm like a numbers type of dude. So I like to do my research and just, you know, 
for fun and uh, just in my spare time i'm not a mathematician or anything like that i'm not good at math i just kind of like just doing the numbers you know comparing the basic numbers and simple explanation so there's the graph without the islands obviously here you want to go bam it's dead center but i'm a little low on this range here but i think it will work out perfect i mean shoot it should make that power and the 63 ar is a small undivided housing on the 1j and i'm putting it on with just kind of like an ebay manifold i know eh, ebay don't don't crucify me here but just kind of i don't have enough money to do it the particularly baller way so i'm going to do it on a budget uh some of my friends have used the ebay manifolds without any issues 2j 1j vvti non all that stuff so i don't see an issue with that um just kind of a bolt-on solution but uh yeah if you guys have any questions or comments of any of these things any of these graphs or information on the turbocharger you can comment on this video and ask me and i can get the answers for you or uh, you can kind of do a little bit of research if you want on your own to figure it out um just whatever you you guys have any information on that's from your setup but this is only the gtx 3076r in the 63 ar um this is the generic just compressor map so hopefully this will help you guys understand turbo um you know graphs a little bit better and uh understand the information you need and what you can do to choose the correct turbo for your application and make the dopest car that you can make and not have issues so uh thanks guys uh subscribe like tell your friends and we'll hopefully have some more videos for you here soon